Hey, you're here with Ben and welcome to part one of my Turkish coastal road trip series. But before we hit the road, I've got five days in Istanbul and I want to dive as deep as I can. In this video, we'll be experiencing our first hammam, exploring ancient cisterns, getting distracted in the Grand Bazaar and by so many cats. And of course, topping it all off with learning a ton of history in the wonderful Hagia Sophia. Hey, we're Ben and Camille, two foreigners living in Munich, Germany, and over the past three years, we've documented our travels with one goal in mind, helping you travel by not just inspiring you, but fundamentally empowering you with all the knowledge you need to go out there and do it for yourself. But first, I need to grab myself a Turkish coffee. So while we were grabbing coffee, I noticed something on the map. You know how I like to scroll around. And though it's not on the itinerary, it's right up my alley. And that is the Great Mosaic Museum just down here on the Arasta Bazaar. Though, don't get lost like I did. It's down a little jitty. Okay, so obviously I'm stoked for the museum. Small, specific, mosaics. I'm in a good mood, but I'm in a better mood now because I've got a challenge ahead of me, specifically to see if I can get my money's worth of the 600 lira museum ticket card. It works all over Turkey, gets you into a ton of museums, they say over 300. I spent a few minutes umming and ahhing, it's only 30 liras to get in here, so 600 feels like a tall order, but it lasts for the entirety of my trip, 15 days, and it works all over Turkey. So now the rest of this trip is gonna be all about can I get my money's worth? Is this worth it? Did I overspend? Am I being too ambitious? Or is this the best deal I could have picked up? To find out though, like, comment, subscribe. You're gonna have to watch the whole series to find out if we get our money's worth. But step one, let's go see some mosaics. Let's deduct 30 lira on the screen. Also, this museum has the best cat so far. The Great Palace Mosaics Museum is a gem, containing a superb collection of some of the most exquisite and best preserved mosaics in the entire world. I mean, how good are these? Exceptional. Though they date back to around 500 AD, they were actually covered by marble slabs sometime in the 700s, leaving them perfectly preserved and forgotten for over a thousand years. I mean, was there ever really any doubt as to whether or not I would love this place? I don't think so. I mean, how cool is this? <laughs> Kitty! Why you do that game? Why you do that game? Why are you a little cat who plays games? Oh, you've got good balance. A oh, good balance for cat. All right, that museum was absolutely wonderful. Right what I needed as well, quiet and peaceful. And I'd highly recommend it to any of you out there feeling a little bit fatigued. If there's anything I've learned about Istanbul so far is that it can be fatiguing. And to go to such a quiet, peaceful and specific museum, wonderful, highly recommend. But now let's move on. All right, so let's talk cisterns, specifically the Theodosius cistern, with its claim to fame being not only a 1,600 year old cistern, but also being the world's oldest building with a 360 degree projection mapped light show. We'll see how that goes. Overall, I thought it was gonna be really cheesy and maybe not worth it. It is a hundred lira, which is far more expensive than some of the other things we've been doing. And they don't accept the museum card. However, I would rate it decently highly. It's all about the ambiance. There's no spoken words. So you don't need to worry about language difficulties. You just descend into the cistern and exist in its ambiance.
So now this is a surprise, a completely unprompted trip to the Grand Bazaar. In truth, I find window shopping to be painfully boring. So overall, I wasn't going to cover it. However, we do now have a few things on our shopping list. Most notably, it's a little colder during the off-season than I anticipated, so Camille needs a hat. And since we'll be visiting plenty of masks, it might make sense for Camille to buy a headscarf too. And there was a bit of a shooting mishap as well, so I think we need a phone case. And then lastly, I wanted to get some Turkish delight at a good old sweet shop, and if we're going to be going in the Grand Bazaar anyway, well, they've got plenty. Let's get in there and check it out. This soap, Turkish, uh, soap al -Umran. This all natural, this helmet, there's no chemical. So, yeah, we didn't get about 10 steps into the bazaar before being pulled into a store to buy something not on our list. That being said, the shop owners were really, really nice, and the soap they sold was fantastic. Way better than the stuff I've been getting in the hotels. So I don't regret it at all. But still, the very first thing I've bought today was not on my list. And I think that says something. I managed to get the soap down to about 400 litre. Not quite sure if that's good or bad. There's no prices on anything and I'm not a professional soap buyer. So uh, we'll do a big haul at the very end and we'll keep a count and maybe you can tell us in the comments how well or bad we did. Truly living up to its reputation, this place is overwhelming. Which candy store am I supposed to go to? Where should I buy a scarf? Hard to know. I think this sweet shop is going to win the day, specifically because they have jasmine tea bowls and lavender tea mixes, plus all of the Turkish delights, so definitely. It's very nice. <laughs> it's going to be good stuff. <laughs> Let's go fill a bag. All right, candy store out of the way. That was another 380 lira. It seems like it's pretty hard to exit a store without spending at least that much. I think on average, that's gonna be around $22 or 22 euros. I'll put it on screen. So it's not too bad, but man, you do have to be careful. It's tough selling out there. You just asked me, what did we come in here for? That's exactly what this place is built to do. You completely forget. Okay, so that's mission scarf accomplished. And we didn't spend too much money, only 130 lira. I mean, I came this close to buying a more expensive one, but we brought it down. Consider that a win. First time of the day we haven't spent too much money in one of these stores. No luck on hats or phone cases yet, though one guy overheard me talking about phone cases, took one right off of his friend's phone and said how much. It's absolutely wild. So I think we might be done, but we'll keep having a bit of a wonder just in case. So we ended up having to go to the outdoor market just next door to finish things off, but we're officially done. We bought everything we needed and a little bit more. In truth, I don't really think you can prepare for it unless you've been to one of these things. I mean, I know they're pretty aggressive, but I wasn't quite ready for that. One guy pulled me back into his shop in an attempt to sell me 600 lira Yeezys. We started at 1700, so who knows? I'll go ahead and put on screen now what we bought, how much we spent. You can tell us if we did a good job or not. Or if and, we got ripped off. Yeah, or if we got ripped off. I'll see how I'm feeling in the morning. I think in all I was being perhaps a bit of a curmudgeon about the whole market thing. I still don't believe in window shopping, but ultimately having something that I wanted to go buy and going and getting it, uh, it was an experience. It was a lot of fun. But now, let's keep going. All right, they got me. Last store of the day, and I ended up buying the 600 litre Yeezys. Just couldn't help myself. This is why I don't go shopping. I can't be trusted. So now we've finally made it to perhaps what is the biggest temp pole activity on my Istanbul itinerary, the Hagia Sophia. We just got here at 10 a.m., which is admittedly not early enough. There's also a lot of confusion, which is why I've stepped out of line to talk to you before we go in, most notably around the fact that it is a fully functioning mosque nowadays. It's not a museum anymore, meaning it never really closes. You could come here supposedly at 2 a.m., take your shoes off, and have a gander. But yet, there's a line, and that is because they have to clean eventually, and so after morning prayer, and today, until 10.30, the doors are shut. And something really interesting happened as I was stepping out of line. A guide came up to me, just a guy with a little badge around his neck saying, hey, if we're interested in a tour, he'd be interested in giving one. I kind of waved him off because 
Istanbul has so much hard selling that I'm becoming kind of numb to it all, but he had pretty good vibes. He said he was a historian and his badge looked legit. So you know what? I'm gonna take a bit of a gamble. If he comes back around, he offers me that price again, I'll go in with a guide. That'll make for a change. So we ended up being in there for over an hour. Call it a 30 minute tour. And we did go with the tour guide. He was wonderful. I do think you could possibly do it on your own, just waltz on in and take a gander. But honestly, going with the guide, especially a fun one like what we had, you know, you go a little bit slower. You look a little bit longer and you learn a little bit more about what you're seeing. I was also worried that going with the guide, maybe they're a bit dry, maybe they're a bit long winded, but not this guy. He was good fun, his pacing. I think I know a little bit about pacing. You know, he he just did such a great job of it. I was always engaged. The things he pointed out was so brilliant. I'll put all of his information on screen now, just in case you want the same guy as me, give him an email, give him a message on WhagiaSofia. I don't think I could rate it highly enough. The Hagia Sophia has now gone from something I thought I would like to something I loved. <laughs> so we now find ourselves in an opulent palace turned grand museum to Turkish and Islamic art. And if I'm being honest with you, I was originally considering skipping this. I mean, a museum covering hundreds of years worth of history and all the artifacts in between, that's not really my bag. Followers of the channel will understand that my favorite museums are local and specific. Not to say that I didn't gain a massive appreciation for the truly intricate geometric and calligraphic artworks. I definitely did, they're stunning. But I want to learn about the people. It's just hard to really appreciate them without that context. However, I came anyway because it's free on my museum ticket. Boy, am I glad I picked that up. So let's knock off a few more lira. Though in honesty, I'm actually really glad I came now. Just as we were about to leave, as I was feeling completely museum fatigued out, there's an ethnography exhibit that blew my mind. Oh, and I also met some really cool cats. But yeah, this exhibit, it's something else. Small, specific, and all about the people with recreations of their day-to-day -day life that really put all of the artifacts I'd previously seen into context. For now though, I think it's about time we move on. There are cats to pet. Oh, and before we leave, the palace's balconies, they're a pretty cool place to witness the call to prayer. Now, if you aren't all cisterned out from the laser light show earlier, do I have a recommendation for you? And what very well might be the least assuming attraction in all of Istanbul. I mean, I know it doesn't look like it, but behind me is a feat of engineering, the second largest cistern in the entire city. 1,600 years old, just like the other one. It really is insane, but I do get that the optics make it look like it's a valet parking lot. At 50 lira, which you can pay to the valet attendant behind me, it's pretty cheap and it'll only take you about 15 minutes to see. Not to mention, it might be one of the best places to have some peace and quiet from the rest of the tourists because nobody seems to know about this place. I can't imagine why. Because don't get this wrong, I am looking at the Hagia Sophia right now, right across from the Blue Mosque. This is in the heart of central tourist Istanbul. No one knows about it. And though I do understand this is going to be nobody's favorite activity, I really loved it. I love a good cistern. I loved getting to see another angle of it, one a little bit less commercialized than the other one I think it adds a good balance and so I would heartedly recommend it it's cheap it's quick it's quiet what more do you want
So to get to our next attraction, we need to cross the water, by bridge of course, specifically the Galata Bridge, which is made famous for its fresh fish food scene. However, you won't be seeing much of that in this episode, as there's just so much to say about Istanbul's epic food scene that it deserves its own video entirely. So yeah, if you're enjoying this one so far, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the rest of this adventure. As a tiny channel, it would really mean a lot. We're heading over to Galata Tower now. It's free on my museum pass, so you know I'm gonna get that value. But I figured I'd talk about the bridge itself because it's really quite interesting. As I mentioned in the food video, it's chock-a-block with fishermen and their wastewater, giving kind of the whole bridge a very fishy smell. Not just that though, it's so much more crowded than I expected it to be with a ton of people, a ton of fishermen, a ton of parked cars. It's a lot going on on this bridge. Camille's gonna hold my place in line at the Galata Tower as I talk to you guys. I have a feeling we're gonna be in there for a minute. It wasn't really on my list of things to do until of course we got the museum card and I realized that I get in for free. Or at least I get in for the sunk cost of the museum card. It's also worth noting that the tickets to these attractions have a separate line than the attraction themselves. So if you don't have a museum ticket or anything pre-booked, that's two lines for you, mate. At 100 lira per ticket to get into this thing, it's a bit dear, especially compared to the 30 litre of the Mosaic Museum. I have a feeling this is much more of a rainmaker. With that price and that line, they're making bank. <laughs> I mean, it is proper crowded. We also need to give a big thank you to Camille in the comments for holding our place in line so that we could run around and film all this dialogue without having to take up twice as much time. Thanks, buddy. For now, though, I should probably get back in that line with Camille as we await entrance into this grand attraction. And at the end, I'll tell you whether or not I think it was worth it. With these kind of talk things you never know In total, I think I spent around 45 minutes in that tower. I've got to say, I would rate it quite highly. I'm very skeptical. I'm a bit of a curmudgeon of any of these touristy sites, but to say I got in for free with the museum ticket and I got to see a wonderful sunset, the moss light up and hang out in there during the call to prayer, that's a lot of adjectives and I really enjoyed it. So I have been excited about this little itinerary item ever since I spoke to the guide this morning at the Hagia Sophia, and that's to check out a mosque at night, but not just any mosque, specifically the Suleiman the Magnificent Mosque. And if I may say so, it is pretty magnificent. There are a lot of details to the mosque that when it's crowded are just very difficult to appreciate. And so coming here at a slightly different and odd hour is pretty cool. Most notably, just having more time to really appreciate the architecture. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't apprehensive originally though. Something about coming at an odd hour feels wrong, at least guttorally. However, it couldn't have been more chill. There's a specific entrance for visitors as opposed to worshippers, and it's all clearly marked. So we just nipped around the side and went in from there. However, if you're a woman without a scarf and you don't have one, there wasn't a place to rent one. I know a lot of people say, oh, you don't need one. You can pick one up at the mosque. But if you're coming off tourist season and off tourist hours, they definitely might not be prepared to have one for you. So pick one up at a market. That's what we did. We're going to be checking out the adjoining hammam in a minute, the only hammam in all of Istanbul that allows couples, but of course shooting there might be limited. Yeah, oh, I thought you had like died. <laughs> can they even <laughs> Can you even see? <laughs> it feels pretty sketch. It's I don't like know if you can see this, but uh... It's like a sketchy alley. <laughs> it feels really like a sketchy alley. Oh my god. Yeah, so this is the alleyway you take between the Suleiman Mosque and the Suleiman Hammam. And uh, I'm not entirely convinced that we haven't been catfished, but uh, stay tuned. 
and so we weren't catfished at all. And in keeping with the magnificent mosque, this hammam is indeed magnificent too. So after changing into our fetch, bathing attire, handedly provided by the staff, we were escorted to the main hammam chamber. Decked out in heated marble slabs, this room is insanely hot, humid, and you need to spend a full 30 minutes in here before they'll even begin to scrub you down. And that's what the real draw of the hammam is, the Turkish scrub and bubble massage. Now, I'm no newbie when it comes to sauna culture, but this really pushed me to my bathing limits. Between the heat and the extra firm massage on yet another heated marble slab, I was practically begging to be doused in the frigid water held in the ornate basins dotted around the hall. Overall, this was a truly wonderful experience and I would highly recommend it. And sure, it wasn't the most authentic, considering I could go with Camille and all, I wouldn't have it any other way. Overall, it was just a wonderful experience and I would highly recommend it. But uh, make sure you drink plenty of water first. So I'm afraid that's all I have for you in this video, but if you've stuck around this far, well, do I have a treat for you, as this is only part one of my largest series yet, my Turkish coastal road trip. In the next video, we're putting my public transport chops to the test as I attempt to travel up and down the Bosphorus all by myself. No tour guide needed, or at least I hope not. And then following that, we have a full Istanbul street food tour for you. So yeah, if you've loved this one, you're gonna love these. And if you wouldn't mind, maybe consider liking and subscribing so you don't miss out. And since I can't wait to share it with you, here's a sneak peek of what's coming up next.